Recently, there have been many outbreaks of a bacterium known as MRSA, short for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. MRSA was once thought of as simply a nosocomial infection, one acquired only in the hospital. However, in the last five years there has been a spreading occurrence of MRSA outbreaks. A growing number of otherwise healthy people, many of whom have never been in the hospital, are developing life-threatening staph infections. The Center for Disease Control reported that in 2005, 19,000 people died from MRSA. In 2004, the University of Connecticut football team had a MRSA outbreak, and in the central Virginia area alone, between February and March of 2008, there have been three reportings of MRSA in local middle and elementary schools. Should we be worried about this increase in MRSA outbreaks? What is MRSA, and how can we prevent it from spreading? By analyzing Staphylococcus aureus and MRSA, we can find out more about these bacterial diseases and how we can treat them. Background Information Staphylococcus aureus was discovered in Aberdeen, Scotland in 1880 by the surgeon Sir Alexander Ogston in pus from surgical abscess. Staph is a bacteria that lives in the nose and on the skin of most healthy human beings. Staph causes problems when it gets deeper into the body into breaks in the skin or other places like the bloodstream, lungs, heart, and urinary tract. Most human beings who carry the bacteria have no signs or symptoms. The most common signs of a skin infection of Staphylococcus are abscess and pus. Staph spreads on contaminated objects as well as through direct contact. Many other skin infections are also caused by staph, including boils, cellulitis, impetigo, and scalded skin syndrome in babies. Since staphylococcus can travel through the bloodstream, it affects many different areas. Other diseases caused by staph are endocarditis, osteomyelitis, pneumonia, toxic shock syndrome, and food poisoning. Staph can be life-threatening if it develops into one of these more serious diseases, which is why it is very important to recognize an infection and get it treated quickly. Treatment Treatment of Staphylococcus aureus usually involves antibiotics. In the 1940s, penicillin was found to be an effective antibiotic to treat staph, but only 10 years later, half of all staph bacteria were resistant to penicillin. Now, less than 10% of all staph bacteria respond to treatment with penicillin. Antibiotic treatment can involve stronger antibiotics now, like vancomycin. However, although vancomycin has been very effective, there is the danger that resistance to vancomycin could become widespread among staph bacteria. Now that we've discussed the basics about staph, let's answer some questions about MRSA, like, what's the difference between MRSA and staph? MRSA starts out just like Staphylococcus aureus, with symptoms of a red, swollen, infected area with an abscess or small red bumps that look like pimples. MRSA is simply a strain of staph that is resistant to beta-lactam antibiotics, the broad-spectrum antibiotics commonly used to treat staph infections. When did MRSA start? The first reported case of MRSA was reported in an English hospital in 1961. The first documented nosocomial outbreak of MRSA in the United States occurred at Boston City Hospital in 1968. The investigation of this outbreak supported transmission by direct contact. The first community-acquired MRSA case wasn't until 1999. What caused MRSA? There are many causes for MRSA. The first is unnecessary antibiotic use in humans. MRSA is a superbug that is a result of decades of excessive and unnecessary antibiotic use. For years, antibiotics have been prescribed for colds, the flu, and other viral infections that don't respond to these drugs, as well as for simple bacterial infections that normally clear on their own. There are antibiotics in the food and the water in the United States. Antibiotics can be found in beef cattle, pigs, and chickens. And finally, germ mutation. Even when antibiotics are used appropriately, they contribute to the rise of drug-resistant bacteria because they don't destroy every germ they target. Bacteria that survive treatment with one antibiotic soon learn to resist others. Because bacteria mutate much more quickly than new drugs can be produced, 
some germs end up resistant to just about everything. That's why only a handful of drugs are now effective against most forms of staph. Are you at risk of acquiring MRSA? If you have been recently hospitalized, your risk of acquiring MRSA is much higher than normal. MRSA remains a concern in hospitals where it can attack those most vulnerable older adults, and people with weakened immune systems, burns, surgical wounds, or serious underlying health problems. A 2007 report from the Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidemiology estimates that 1.2 million hospitals are infected with MRSA each year in the U.S., with another 423,000 colonized with it. The risk for community-associated MRSA is tied to a few factors. Age. Community-associated MRSA can be particularly dangerous in children. Often entering the body through a cut or scrape, MRSA can quickly cause a widespread infection. Participation in contact sports. Uh, CA MRSA has crept into both amateur and professional sports teams. The bacteria spread easily through cuts and abrasions and skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, it also seems to be linked to spread through gymnasiums and locker rooms. Other risks include healthcare workers or those associated with them having a weakened immune system or living in crowded or unsanitary conditions. Treatment of MRSA Treatment for MRSA is antibiotics, specifically vancomycin. However, the first case of staph that was resistant to glycopeptide antibiotics like vancomycin was reported in 2002, and three of such cases were reported in the United States through 2005. Vancomycin is effective for now, but what will we do when the staph mutates again and becomes resistant? Prevention. Prevention seems to be the best way to deal with staph and MRSA. How do we prevent this? Well, there are two areas where MRSA is acquired, so we'll deal with them separately. What can you do in the hospital? Well, to protect yourself, family members, or friends from hospital-acquired MRSA or staph, Ask all hospital staff to wash their hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before touching you every time. Wash your own hands frequently and make sure that IV tubes and catheters are inserted under sterile conditions. What can you do in your community? Protecting yourself from MRSA in your community, which could be just about anywhere, seems daunting, but common sense precautions can help reduce your risk. The first and most important way to prevent staph and MRSA is to wash your hands. Careful hand washing remains your best defense against germs. Carry a small bottle of hand sanitizer containing at least 62% alcohol for the times when you don't have access to soap and water. Keep your personal items personal. Avoid sharing personal items like towels, sheets, razors, or clothing and athletic equipment because MRSA spreads on contaminated objects as well as through direct contact. Keep wounds covered. Keep all cuts and abrasions clean and covered with sterile dry bandages until they're healed. The pus from infected sores may contain MRSA, and keeping the wounds covered will help keep the bacteria from spreading. Remember to shower immediately after athletic games or practices, and to sanitize your linens. Finally, get tested. If you have a wound that's draining or appears infected, for example if it's red, swollen, warm to the touch, or tender, ask your doctor if you should get tested for MRSA. Doctors may prescribe drugs that aren't effective against antibiotic-resistant staph, which delays treatment and creates more resistant germs. Testing specifically for MRSA may get you the specific antibiotic you need to effectively treat your infection. In conclusion, in the past 10 years we have seen MRSA go from a nosocomial infection, only seen in the hospitals, now to a community-acquired disease with a rising death rate. However, Staph and MRSA are both simply prevented by washing your hands and being sanitary. Can we eradicate staph and MRSA? More than likely, no. However, one key in reducing the resistance of staph and MRSA is to use antibiotics appropriately. When you're prescribed an antibiotic, take all of the doses, even if the infection is getting better. Don't stop until your doctor tells you to stop. Don't share antibiotics with others or save unfinished antibiotics for another time. Inappropriate use of antibiotics, including not taking all of your prescription or overuse, contributes to resistance. If your infection isn't improving after a few days of taking an antibiotic, contact your doctor.